Orion also strongholds planetary grid and gate site Zion, China. This is according to the Universal Celestial Templars. This site is strong held by Orion, and it truly is um, held by Orion. And I'm going to show you guys why it is because um, this is really fascinating that I've just realized a lot of this information that I'm about to tell you guys about um, because it's basically the origin of mummification. The Orion radio light source brought this intelligence to the planet. And um, because uh, every Stargate site has corresponding grid sites that operate in accordance to those specific initial integration of that radio light source, that specific initiation or integration of that um, intelligence. Okay, so there is what is called a Templar Q site. And so the corresponding Templar Q site to Zion, China would be um, the Taklamakan Desert. So it's this entire region here. This is a highly, highly activated um, energetic site on the planet. Um, it's essentially a desert that is just set in the middle of like lush um, environment. It's just like, it's almost like, it looks like a, like from space, it looks like a sore spot like within the land. It's just like this um, really beige and gray and completely sanded out circular uh, area right here within um, this part of the country okay and so uh, this desert um, interfaces with horizontal ley lines which is parallel to or uh, synergistic or in accordance to the um, uh, 23.5 angular pole tilt of the geographic location um, in accordance to the uh, um, particle rotations of the planet. So um, I think in other videos I've told you guys about particle rotations, how they go angular. And um, angular is the fastest way to access the inner earth Q sites. So the Taklamakan Desert uh, interfaces that inner earth Q site and that is an access point to the inner earth core spanner gates, um, which is all processes of transfiguration if you are utilizing gate sites, grid sites, Templar sites, um, ley lines for um, any type of trans-dimensional um, activations, energy work, visualization, things of that nature. Uh, Taklumakan is in the northwest China and it's the desert and this is essentially holding human preservation at its Finest, okay, for some reason, if you die in the desert, your body's gonna be preserved. It's gonna be preserved in a very um, unique, special way. Like, it's not gonna decompose like it would if you die, you know, somewhere else because of the um, high winds, because of all of the salt. Apparently, it's like very salty, so this um, contributes to uh, the body's preservation as well. Um, but essentially, uh, these are the lands and the true origins of mummies. Okay, so this is, this is where mummification came from. And how it tracked across the country was there's actually a very famous route. It's called the Silk Route, okay? And this is how um, they essentially, you know, transported goods and things from China all the way to Rome, which is here. And so it's this entire route, it's called the Silk Route, or the Silk Route, and it extends from China to Rome, and it tracks through the Gobi and the Taklamakan Desert. Okay, so it's actually a very treacherous uh, route that one would have to take to uh, go through these deserts. Many people enter through these deserts, and they do not come out alive. To enter into the Taklamakan Desert, it is considered like the end of the world, it's considered no man's land. And I'm gonna get way more into that for you guys. Um, but yeah, this uh, location is truly in fact the origin of mummification. And this is predating Egyptian afterlife preservation technologies. And the energetic significance of mummification actually comes from 
the Orion radial light source. So Orion intelligences actually solidified mummification um, into the planet. That's why um, even if you look in the birth chart and someone has a lot of places of Orion, I would immediately know that origins um, stem back to Egypt and they stem back to even China at this point. So there's just a lot of clues, a lot of history that the celestial bodies leave as far as Akashic records. So that's why getting a starseed origin reading would allude to your Akashic records in more depth. And Orion wisdom, carries the collective education of mummification. And this has been solidified planetarily through this initial subharmonic life current, okay? Because all of these Orion activations are coming from this part of the planet. So it has then been brought across the lands. And we are currently in the beginning transduction phases of Orion activations. Um, which is coming from that Takla McCann Templar Q site planetarily. So we're just starting to receive these transmissions. Um, and Takla McCann, like I said before, is considered the end of the world and the land of no return. It is containing our collective identification to time as well because it is said that one loses time in the desert. Um, and so there's a lot of um, synchronicity. There's a lot of um, recognition of the time waves and uh, the time waves according to genetic factors, according to retribution, and also according to justice systems. And this doesn't mean that the world's coming to an end. It just means that more is going to be revealed to us through these specific gate sites. So I've been receiving transmissions through electronic data streaming and the imprints or the words have been the sands of time. So I was hearing this all last week, the sands of time, the sands of time, and I'm just like, why do I keep hearing the sands of time? So I really just tune in when I start receiving these messages. I was also hearing the elephant graveyard, and I'm like, why do I keep seeing these words flash across my menu hanging in space, right? So over and over, I'm going to get into this act, this specific activation in more detail with you guys and what this all means collectively because we're going to be going through a lot of time activations um, now that we're shifting into Orion. We begun going through transduction integration processes weeks before that gate is fully open because it is a constant process of beginning to move up planetarily in matter density experience. So the Orion gate is considered density three, dimension seven, eight, and nine, transmitting from Mintaka and Alnatak. Essentially, the star systems are all interlinked into these processes because they are apart and intermixed with the primal life currents. And um, they transmit activations and send the encoding back and forth from uh, the activations within your biological perceivability and also within planetary grid sites uh, as well. So that's uh, how this comes in. These are the primal um, energies, the, pri the primary energies, um, the planetary energies are primary and then um, human biological perception is secondary. And you know, this is essentially, like I said, comes through that cathara first and then uh, your transmission is secondary to planetary quantum transductions. It's also secondary to time waves and perceivable uh, primal life currents, which are according to light electromagnetic waves and also gravitational waves. So, uh, th and this is uh, ripples in space. So it's interesting because there's so many different ways to perceive waves, time waves, gravitational waves, primal life current waves. Um, and we're not even really like incorporating gravitational waves. So like this entire energetic update has been about like light waves, but we're not even including um, uh, gravitational waves. So that kind of throws everything for a loop. So a lot is going to start coming up about the Fibonacci spiral, the crystal spiral, in terms to their respective relationships to their creation points. Mathematical sequencing, trans-dimensional time travel, past, present, and future, frequency splits, 
bifurcation of time, which is separation of timelines. Okay, so this Taklamacan activation is going to be stirring up the time pot, so to speak. Um, and I can tell you why, because it's honestly, it's connected to time. It, it literally is the sands of time. Taklamacan means go in and you will not come out. It's considered the end of the world. It's considered the land of no return. It is considered the origin of the elephant graveyard. According to legend, it's a place where an older elephant would go instinctively to die alone and leaving, you know, elephant skeletons and ivory tusks. This is a poacher's dream of hitting the jackpot as they enter into the desert and search for their fortune, right? Not knowing that they're probably not going to come out because all is lost in the sands of time. Um, but it, but what it is alluding to is the intelligence of the elephant that an elephant has death rituals. Okay, and death rituals are uh, synchronistic or synergistic to the origin of mummification, um, the origin of the sands of time, reminding one of their dreams that have been buried in the sand, our truths that have been covered up and forgotten. This activation is reminding people that they may feel like life is passing them by. Okay, so this is to remind you to wake up, to activate, to not allow life to pass you by, to seize the moment, to um, step into these activations, step into ascension, step into evolving your consciousness and um, understanding that uh, time perceptions are shifting planetarily and time perceptions uh, and limitations will be currently falling away. Um, these planetary gate sites also may be the original activations for holidays like Halloween and Dia de Muerta, the Day of the Dead. So this is like the true original source is the Orion origin. Um, and it's all underneath the winds in the desert, you know? If you're in the winds in the desert, you're not going to be able to see any stars. What you're going to see is fog and swirling sand and probably a lot of salt in your eyes. So that's how it works. This is human preservation work at its finest in the desert. There is no greater activator to the awareness of time than the face of death itself. Orion is going to bring through these hard truths, these hard realities. Um, justices and retributions. It's going to bring through the depths of the human existence and limitations on planet Earth up against the physics and laws of time. So Orion is going to be bringing through major planetary resets to our relationship to time. So expect a boost. Expect a boost as we go inward on our journey to identifying the space of multidimensionality within our relationship to primal life currents and what's perceived as time. Okay guys, so I really hope that you enjoyed this Orion grid activation today. I am working on getting this time video out. Um, there's just so much that goes into this really that you know me, I go off into the quantum deep end and jump off the diving board there. So I have to spend a little bit of time sorting through my explanations because honestly, this is, this can be a sensitive subject for some. And, um, yeah, so just know planetarily Orion is beginning its interdimensional transduction phases and that is where we are at. So I love you guys so much. Namaste. Thank you for listening to my message today. If you would like a Starseed Origin reading, indigoangel222.com.